So far we've looked at a lot of different threats to organisations and individuals. We haven't really talked about the actual impact, the actual fallout from any of these threats if they actually become attacks. So let's do this now and look at some various factors to consider when we see that a security breach has happened. A security breach being an attack where data has been affected in some way. An attack has managed to actually break through the defences and affected the organisation in some way. So when we are considering impacts, we are thinking both about the immediate impact, what is happening right now as the attack is happening or has just happened, but also the lasting effects on both individuals and organisations. It's rare that a cyber attack happens, a cyber breach happens and things go back to normal straight away. There'll be some lasting effects which could last weeks, months, even years. The first possible impact we can talk about is data loss. So the attacker may be trying to destroy data, trying to delete data, or they are managing to modify it beyond recovery. So a lot of attacks would just be the attacker trying to access some data, but actually you could lose data in the process where it gets deleted or the attacker changes it so much that you can't really do anything meaningful with it. This is why it's so important to have backups, although I quite like this example here of a cyber attack from a few years ago where an attacker who was never found managed to delete 18 years worth of data for an email company in America. And this attacker managed to somehow delete both the primary data source, but also the backup data source. So it's not just as simple as having a backup, it's got to be a secure backup as well, and it should be unrelated to your primary data source. But for certain companies, like an email company, losing data is massive because so much of their business model relies on customers having easy access to the data, in this case, their emails. Now, another impact we can consider is definitely would be affected if you manage to lose data is how the company is considered to the public. So an impact can be damage to a public image and this can be very long lasting. People don't tend to forget, you know, good reputations are very hard to grow, but very easy to destroy. It could take years and years and years for a company to gain trust from its customers. And if they get attacked and data is lost or some other effect, the customers may think, well, actually, they're not taking it seriously enough, they're not professional enough, they haven't managed to defend our personal information or some other products, and so they may not use them anymore, they may lose money because of this. To give another example, this one from 2015, TalkTalk Talk is a large internet service provider in the UK, and they had a massive cyber attack, massive cyber breach, data was lost, it was actually a DDoS attack, and here, in highlighted, is a point about their damage to public image. So the firm itself, Talk Talk, said they lost around 100,000 customers as a result, but actually another firm thought it might be higher, it might be 300,000, which was 7% of its total customers. That is a lot for a company to lose, a lot of money to lose. And I'm sure other customers did not sign up to Talk Talk in the years following because of uh, this attack and because they remembered that maybe Talk Talk were not taking things as seriously as they should have. Another impact we can consider is Reduction in productivity, not something you maybe think about first of all, but the word productivity in this context refers to how well an employee does their work, how much work they're doing, how high quality is the work they're doing. And a cyber attack can affect this because first of all, employees need to be able to respond and recover from the attack. This takes a lot of work and it's not the normal work they would be doing unless they work on security full time. So while they are responding and recovering, they're not doing their normal work, which affects their overall productivity. But also, this could be because the attack systems might suffer downtime, maybe there is some denial of service, maybe the servers are going down, maybe the database gets lost, some issue with their systems where they're no longer functioning, so the server's gone down, everyone panics, everyone's trying to respond to it. But the consequence of downtime generally might be, first of all, well the employees can't use the system, if it's not working they can't use it, and so that will affect their productivity as well. Maybe they can't do their job until it's fixed, until it's recovered. But secondly, unrelated to productivity, but related to how the organization can function, well, the customers can't use the system while it's down. Maybe the website's been taken down, maybe a server's got damaged. The customers can't use it, can't pay the company money for services or products in that time, and so it affects the company in that way. Remember, that could be the purpose of the cyber attack, to create disruption in the company by causing downtime to some key services. We can also consider legal action as an impact to an organisation. The first point here on the government and what the government can do. So under the Data Protection Act, a law in the UK, companies who are not adequately protecting personal information can have heavy fines. So the government can issue heavy fines, could be millions of pounds in some cases, because when the company has been investigated, the government found that actually they were not doing 
certain things they're not keeping data secure. Now if the company hadn't done much wrong, if the attacker was just really powerful or really skilled and the company had looked after data properly, if they just got a bit unlucky, then they wouldn't get fined or wouldn't get fined very much. But what might happen either way, either the company is terrible or has not done much wrong, the affected victims can still sue the organisation for compensation. This is a civil action, it's not really involving the government. These victims might be starting a lawsuit against the organisation and looking for compensation and so potentially the company is dragged into legal action, got to pay for lawyers and go through all of that process and if they lose the court case they might have to pay money to victims. The reason the victim might sue the organisation not the attacker is first of all who is the attacker, perhaps nobody knows and also they might claim the organisation is not really doing enough to keep their data safe and so the organisation was at fault as well as the attacker. And the final impact to think about is one which is very obvious, as I've obviously admitted so far, is the most important one arguably, which is financial loss. So the fact that cyber attacks are expensive, no company wants to have it. I'm sure lots of bosses stay awake at night thinking of the consequences if they get hacked or something like this. So all of the impacts so far, legal action, loss of data, loss of reputation, reduction in productivity, can of course lead to a loss of money, a loss of income to the company, money having to get paid to fix things and recover. So bear in mind that this financial loss can come both immediately in the immediate aftermath of the attack and also just in the future. So immediate financial losses might come to actually responding to the attack, paying for new systems, recovering data, paying consultants to come in and try and fix things, try and investigate maybe, and also managing downtime, trying to get the services back online again. But in the future, other costs could be fallout from legal action, so maybe a lawsuit, maybe a fine, from the government, but also reputation loss can last a long time. Customers don't forget if a company's been in the news for a bad reason, and so that can affect finances in the future as well.